such a great honor to welcome you here to the State Department. And we are incredibly proud to be sponsoring uh, this program and to be working um, with all of you on behalf of the not only greater integration of uh, women into uh, security and military forces, but also uh, the partnership that we have with these forces, uh, men and women alike. And we are delighted uh, to be uh, involved with and uh, in support of this. So I thank you all very much. I thank our teams who have been working uh, with you. And I wish all of you well as you continue to develop uh, your own positions and your own uh, ambitions, but also the greater opportunity to support your countries. It's very, uh, very important. So thank you all. I'm going to give you a standing <laughs> As you probably learned, um, we have, President Obama has actually launched a national action plan on women, peace, and security uh, for the United States that affects us, the State Department, our development agencies, and of course the Department of Defense. And we have been working together uh, to ensure that women participate more significantly in issues of peace and security, uh, that they are better integrated uh, into the work of the military, which is something all of you have been working on and talking about and going home to work on some more, uh, and to just ensure that we all do a better job as partners with you uh, in the important work of creating uh, better response mechanisms, protection for citizens, and ensuring uh, that we can all do uh, a better job in making peace and keeping the peace. And in many ways, uh, the kind of training that's gone for peacekeepers, uh, the kind of work that's gone on in your uh, militaries, to better integrate women's talents experiences, perspectives, makes us all that much more effective. And Ambassador Carson and his team here in the State Department have been extraordinary partners in all of this. They truly understand how essential women are uh, in the military, at the government stages, uh, on the government stages and in civil society to making all of this work. Uh, and I think what the center did in bringing everybody together uh, makes us that much more stronger together so that we can all do a better job. Uh, so I hope that what came out of the last couple days uh, will enable uh, progress to be made, connections to be made that will make us network much better together, uh, to utilize the AU process more effectively, uh, and I think all of that will uh, contribute to what each and every one of us wants to see, regardless what country we're from in Africa or from the United States. Uh, so, this has been something Secretary Clinton has been very, very committed to. On uh, her trips to Africa, she has often focused on this. Uh, she has certainly uh, forced all of us to do the best job we can uh, in this area. Uh, and I know she's very eager in these very difficult days that we are experiencing uh, here in the department. Uh, to have a chance at least to say hello to you and to be able uh, to take this photo so that you can remember uh, not just having come here, uh, but the fact that we're all in this together. Uh, and she is in this with you. Uh, so I, I want to mention that the ambassador whom we lost uh, in Libya uh, is someone who was deeply committed to the role that women have to play. 
uh, certainly in building the new Livias. Uh, and were he here today, I am confident he would say, carry on, because this is so important to do. All of us have to do the best we can, and it requires all of us. I think that uh, there is a, uh, a clear recognition uh, on the part of uh, the Secretary, Secretary Clinton, on, on the part of the uh, Obama administration, uh, that uh, if, in fact, you do not fully uh, uh, utilize uh, 50 or 51% of your uh, population, uh, you cannot uh, effectively uh, develop uh, in your country fully uh, or rapidly. Uh, it is absolutely essential uh, that women uh, be given the same kinds of opportunities, the same kind of uh, access, uh, and the same kind of services and privileges uh, that young boys uh, and young men uh, receive. Uh, through uh, the uh, USAID, we have, uh, over uh, a number of years, uh, introduced uh, programs uh, that are directed at trying to close the gap uh, between uh, the level of education uh, that young African boys receive and the level of education uh, that uh, young African girls and women receive. It's absolutely imperative uh, that that gap uh, be closed uh, for Africa to realize its full potential uh, and its full uh, power. So there is a focus uh, uh, out there uh, that is sometimes missed uh, that is directed uh, at, uh, at young girls and women. Uh, USAID does have uh, education and scholarship programs that are directed uh, towards women. Not nearly enough uh, to meet the needs. But one of the things that we say to African governments uh, and African institutions is to make sure that you open your doors as wide for women uh, as you do for men. Because to the extent that you leave women uh, and girls behind, you will never be able uh, to catch up. It is absolutely uh, essential. You see that all across the United States, uh, where today uh, we have more uh, women in law school, uh, an equal number of women in medical schools, uh, and a rising importance uh, of women uh, as the primary uh, earners uh, and thinkers uh, and leaders, not only in their families, uh, in their communities, but uh, in their uh, countries. It's important for it's important for, for for your societies as it is for, for ours. And we cannot afford to leave fifty percent of the population uh, behind. Sorry. Could you please join me in thanking Ambassador Vivian and Ambassador Carson for taking